My love for architecture and modernism started probably in the early 90s. I work in advertising and somehow I was probably exposed to it at that time and I spent probably more time getting more interested in maybe the furniture. There's just something about that period that just sort of fascinating from the industrial design and just kind of the clean lines of all the architecture. I think the love for modernism started sort of when um, we, uh, we started dating and getting together and you know I sort of absorbed it from him. I come from Italy and the little town where I came from or even when I moved to Padua things are a little bit more ancient there than than modern so it um, it wasn't until I was here and really together with Chris that I got a sense of how cool it was to be in a modern home. The name of the architect is Douglas Rucker. Um, when we found the house, we neither of us had actually even heard of Doug. The agent was, you know, in the, in the listing, kind of making that a really large selling point for the home. And when we did some research, I actually found out that Doug had done quite a lot of work here in Los Angeles. He's based on the west side in Malibu, and he's not practicing anymore, but he did probably 90 plus homes, residential homes, apartment buildings, as well as uh, a lot of remodels and things like that. And the more I started to dig in, the more I started to realize, or we started to realize, excuse me, that he actually had quite significant work you know, compared to some of the other people from his period. The house was designed in 1964 for an actor by the name of Jack Hogan by uh, Douglas Rucker. And Jack Hogan was a character actor, and as far as I know, after talking to him, he actually lived in the neighborhood uh, down the street in another home that he owned. And while he was living there, he did a bunch of research, and that's when he found Doug. And he really liked Doug's work, and they connected. Uh, Jack Hogan commissioned Doug to design the house, and then it was finished in 64. And Shortly after that, a year or two, I think, and they end up uh, leaving the house, and that's when Muriel, the second owner that we bought the home from, ended up getting the home with her husband. And they had been here for 46 years. You know, there were a lot of special things about the house. When you walk in, a lot of these mid-century homes are on one level. This was a house that's on two levels, and there's a lot of wood. We have always been fans of wood. We have a lot of wood furniture. There's a wood guy that we work with to make some pieces that we have in the house. And when we walked in, it really felt like a place that we could be for a while. Even when you enter the home, right, just from the front door and you look through the big windows and you see the beautiful hillside, it just, um, that inside, outside effect and even the patio or just the living room looking outside, it's, um, it's very peaceful and uh, it gives you that sense of almost living in the countryside when you're really close to the city. This feels like you have more space, you have privacy, even sleeping here, don't have anything that covers the windows so we wake up with almost with the sunrise sometimes leaving the windows open and hearing little birds or animals outside it, it's the squirrels our dog doesn't like the squirrels but it's it's still very beautiful to be immersed in nature I honestly don't think having a baby makes things more difficult in a modern home meaning that the same baby proofing you have to do in a modern home you would have to do it in any other home it's not as easy for us for example with this home to have the baby play around in the backyard since our home is sloped down but other than that maybe because all our past three homes have been modern homes i don't see the difference it did come up when Leo showed up and we started baby proofing the place and thinking about the decks and do we need more space? Do we need a one story house? But in the end, I'm sure this house is going to be fine. I think as a parent, you just have to be protective. It's easy living in a place like LA being exposed to this stuff because there's something about the mid century homes and places like the Stahl House and a lot of the case study homes that just, it's part of this sort of Los Angeles allure a little bit, I think, that. It's hard to live here and not be exposed to that and be kind of taken in by the romance a little bit. So I think the longer, Suzanne has lived in LA longer than me, but the longer that I lived here and the more exposure I and we had, I think the more excited we were about really trying to find the right place for us. My grandfather lived in a modern type home. It was 
one-story home, open space. I don't think it was designed or developed by anybody famous that we would know or anybody would know. But there was something about his home that was really attractive as a kid. Even that we would go there for, for weekends and visit them. And I think they were really good designers too. Their house was very neat and they had really wonderful furniture. They traveled a lot like we travel and they had all these really wonderful souvenirs that were all around the house. And thinking about our home and just living in this modern home in general, it's almost like the house is a bit of a museum for your life. And every time we go on a trip or any experience that we have, getting married, having a baby, it's like this wonderful modern museum where you get to have all your collectibles for your life. So it's, it's something that I really personally enjoy and I think Suzanne.